you know, he's one of the few players in uh, major pro sports history to win an AFCO Cup and a Stanley Cup. To also play for uh, an expansion team. And he also played uh, with uh, not only Bobby Hull, but Phil Esposito, Bobby Orr, Bobby Clark, Bill Barber, uh, Reggie Leach, Rick McLeish. Uh, you know, all the great players of the LA Kings. And again... You're, you probably doesn't come to mind who it is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you go. He he came to Major Providence with the Weyburn Red Wings. He is the pride of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. That big left winger that everybody liked from the time he started playing hockey, Bill Lesuk. Now Bill Lesuk or Lusuk uh, first came to Major Providence again with the Weyburn Red Wings over a four-year career in the SJHL and the CMJHL. His last year with Weyburn, he put up some tremendous numbers, 82 points in 56 games, including uh, 36 goals as a left winger uh, shooting on the left-hand side. Now, uh, Bruins prospect, he played a 68 campaign with the Oklahoma City Blazers of the CPHL with uh, 24 points in 67 games. Now, he was undrafted by Boston, but he was high under radar. Uh, and also, again, uh, just a reminder, he did play in a Memorial Cup for Weyburn, so the talent was uh, very well appreciated. He finally broke in to the Bruins in 1969 season. He got one assist in five games and also played one game in the playoffs after a 47-point uh, season with Oklahoma City. Now, in 1970, the majority season, he was with Boston's affiliates in Hershey with 40 points in 70 games, but was called up for the playoff run and for his part, of that championship team in 1970. Now, 1971 found himself in the Flyers organization, and in his unofficial rookie campaign, because he had played uh, two seasons, didn't hit the 25 game mark, he put up an uh, impressive 36 points in 78 games, including 17 goals. But 72, he found himself traded yet again, or another organization. Started the year with the Flyers with 13 points in 45 games, then moved over to the Kings for 14 points in 27 games to give him 11 goals that year. 73, 20 points in 67 games uh, with the Kings. 74, uh, injured or injury plague season, only two goals. But then he found himself in the Washington Capital System in 1975 with 19 points on the expansion uh, year in 79 games. Now, from there he decided to make a jump from the NHL to the WHA and this is where it became quite interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he was a consistent third-line forward with the Jets in 76-79. to 79. Again, the AFCO Cup Championship uh, trophies. Big one, of course, was the last one where he had uh, four points in 10 playoff games in 79. Now, this is kind of kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen. He played 49 games with the Jets in 1980. Didn't score, only had one assist. But he had... Get, get this, this is complete, completely bizarre. Only minus 15 for the season. So, I mean, uh, he was still a durable defensive player, wasn't scoring as much. But it was kind of bizarre how his uh, production would go down in one year. I never had a chance to talk uh, to the gentleman, but it'd be interesting to see. Again, he was used mostly for uh, defensive purposes. But like I said, he scored 15, 14, 9, and 17 goals in those four seasons in Winnipeg. Again, consistent. 30 to 40 points a season, take an occasional penalty, like, you know, he played with the Flyers as well in in 71. He was uh, not scared to take a penalty. But, oh yeah, uh, final WHA totals, 136 points, 318 games, 55 goals. NHL, 44, 63, 107, uh, with 388 contests. WHA playoff totals, 18 points, 50 games. NHL playoff totals, 1 goal to 9 games. So, ladies and gentlemen, over 700 games played. And if this is the first time you're hearing of a bill, I apologize because he should be recognized. Because when you're playing, again, you play with Orr, Esposito, Cashman, Busick, uh, Leach, McClish, Para, all the great players of the Kings. You look at his last season with L.A., he had uh, skated with uh, Butch Goring, you know, uh, uh, Don Maloney, Tommy Williams was there, Bobby Murdoch. This was before, of course, Marcel Dion uh, showed up. So he was 
one step away for winning a cup with the Flyers at the right place, right time winning a cup with Boston, and part of that Washington team that, again, it was it was uh, rough for them, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And that season with Washington, it wasn't too bad in numbers. Uh, not to say he led the team in plus minus, but again, players who moved shots to Saskatchewan, ladies and gentlemen, the right place at the right time. He could have won two Stanley Cups with the Flyers, again, all those AFCO Cups with Winnipeg, and but uh, it's kind of a mystery, you know, because he had those consistent numbers with the Jets in uh, in the, the late seventies, and to come over to the NHL, it wasn't that different of a of a quality of play. But he lost his scoring touch, which what happens every once in a while. In the case of, for example, Owen Nolan and Mark Messier, when he started, they weren't scoring many goals, as you remember. But when they concluded the career, they were scoring more and more. So sometimes it's like this: a painter loses his his style all at once, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, discontinue, discontinue their talent. And Bill can say to his dying day, I'm an Avco Cup champ, I'm a Stanley Cup champ, I played with Weyburn, look at my rings. Take a look. And he wasn't drafted besides. What a, what a tremendous Tom Brady career. Undrafted, and look at all the championships. Anyway, thanks for listening. Bye.